All guests on Zaslo Show 2.0 brought to us by the official beer of the program, Johnny Cuba. Pick up a six-pack of Johnny Cuba, your local Sedanos, Presidente, Win dixie Fresco y Mas. We're talking European roots with a Caribbean soul. Refreshing German lager in a can. And, of course, you got to remember, always drink responsibly. And don't forget Johnny Cuba's mantra, stay tranquilo. We'll be enjoying a Johnny Cuba myself in the Zaslow Mansion family room tonight as we got Monday Night Football to finish out the week of football. But yesterday, the Dolphins, 30 to nothing. And another starring role, starring performance from Dolphin running back Raheem Mostert, another pair of touchdowns. He has more touchdowns this year than like six teams in the NFL combined. And joining us here is his longtime agent, Brett Tesler. Brett, good to have you on the program. I appreciate it. And I mean, just talk about the, the, the pride that you must have, you know, the relationship you have with Raheem, where you were even just a... You know, a few years ago, I think there's a lot of people who don't know. Raheem Mostert's first team was the Dolphins. He was cut back in his rookie year and how all of this has come full circle. It is it is an amazing story, Zaz, and uh, it's been great to be a part of this entire ride with him. And obviously, you know, over the last few years, he's really made a name for himself, establishing himself as one of the top backs in the league. But, you know, those first three years, uh, success didn't come quick or easy. This is a guy who had zero chance of being drafted, you know, was not invited to the combine, not invited to any all-star game. Um, I think he had about 700 rushing yards his entire four-year college career combined. And um, going through the process, a lot of teams were even telling me, maybe you should think about switching that guy to corner. But, you know... I believed in him. He's always believed in himself. Uh, he's got great people in his corner and uh, he's just living proof. He and I together are living proof that, you know, if you work hard, if you believe in yourself, if you have the talent and if you're willing to persevere in the end, anything's possible. So it's not just that Raheem has gotten to the place where he is right now after everyone doubted him. It didn't look like there was a place in the league for him, but he's now doing this at an age where it seems teams don't want to employ running backs anymore. Yeah. Running backs are like cars as it's not about the year. It's about the mileage. And so this guy still to this day, nine years in has less combined career carries than some running backs that are in their third year. I mean, you look at him break Ricky Williams touchdown record this year, what does Raheem have, like 180 carries or something? I think Ricky had like close to 400. Yeah. So, you know, because of the scheme that he's in, it's not like it's just run up the middle, run up the middle, run up the middle, you know, like keep running into a wall. Um, you know, a lot of this guy's runs are in open space and, you know, he's he's been very smart at avoiding unnecessary contact. And so, you know, this is why you're seeing him do what he's doing. He's in a great scheme, and there's nobody better to run that scheme than him. You saw it in San Francisco, and now we're seeing it here. How did Raheem handle the beginning of the season? Uh, look, there was certainly a pursuit. They didn't go after him too hard because they didn't get him. But, I mean, Dalvin Cook, and, and we saw his usage, you know, yesterday with the Jets and and maybe even to a lesser extent all the Jonathan Taylor stuff with Indianapolis. Uh, it looks pretty silly at this point that, you know, uh, even Dolphin fans w were hoping that they were going to sign one of those guys. How did Raheem handle all of that? Raheem handled that the way he handles everything. He doesn't get caught up in things he can't control. Uh, again, he's got supreme confidence in himself. And let's face it, he's better than both of those guys, maybe put together. And so, you know, you just look at the stats. The stats don't lie. Uh, as his agent, I would mention to him if there was something that, you know, someone from the local media called and shared with me and, uh, you know, told him a few times. And then it got to a point where Raheem's like, hey, man, you know, I appreciate it, but I don't give a shit. He's like, you know, don't, uh, you know, he's basically told me I don't want to hear about it. And so that was that. I respected that. And um, obviously time has proven that, uh, you know, the Dolphins were correct in their final result of not getting those guys and what they would have had to pay them. Um, 
And again, they're better off with the guy they have. So it's worked out well for everybody. And, um, you know, just incredibly proud of that guy. How does that situation happen at the beginning of the year? Do the Dolphins communicate with you, their line of thinking in that spot? I spoke to Greer. I mean, look, you know, I've, I've repped over 600. I've done over 600 contracts throughout the whole league. So I have pretty good relationships with all the teams, Dolphins included. And so, you know, when there was a lot of talk about the Dalvin thing, I was in contact with them and they told me very early on, don't worry about it. It's not happening. So that one, I don't think was ever as realistic as some fans may have uh, been led to believe or may have read about or heard talk about. Uh, The Jonathan Taylor one, I'm not really sure where that thing went. But again, um, I think if you would ask the Dolphins, they would be telling you in the event that they were pursuing one or both of those guys, that they're happy that in the end it didn't work out. Because again, Raheem's always been the best guy for this team. And uh, he goes out there and proves it. And You know, I'm a big believer, Zaz, and a lot of guys that I've represented through the years. Yeah, it's great when you get a guy who is a a higher pick and a guy who goes to the senior bowl, a guy that you know is going to get drafted and you know they're going to make it. It's great to have those guys, but nothing gives me more personal satisfaction than being able to represent guys like Raheem Moster, like Mike Remmers, you know, who was an 11-year starting lineman that I had. Some of these other guys who weren't drafted and weren't expected to do a lot, and I'm a firm believer that had Tom Brady been a top pick, he never would have become the player that we know him as. It was always that late round pick mentality he had. For guys like Raheem, it's always that undrafted slight. It's that chip they carry on their shoulder through their entire career. So is it a coincidence that the GOAT of football was barely drafted at all? That the greatest basketball player ever didn't make his varsity high school team? that Wayne Gretzky scored scored one goal his first year of hockey, so on and so forth. So I think there's a reason why you see some of the greatest of all time in these sports be guys who were disrespected early in their career and really had to work their way up from nothing. How is Raheem feeling right about now this time of season? You know, it's 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 two straight years where he's, he's essential. I mean, I know he split last year with Wilson, but two straight years, he's getting a ton of usage. Like you mentioned, you know, it's not like uh, Derrick Henry and the Tennessee Titans, all right? But they, they certainly use him a lot. How's he feeling right about now? Feels great. You know, this guy's bigger, stronger, and as fast as he's ever been in his career. And like we talked about, Zaz, still low mileage. And so, you know, with a running back, it's a lot of it's about vision. It's about intelligence. And as time goes on, those things just improve with these guys It's just that, unfortunately, for a lot of the other backs who get used up early in their career, by the time they really learn the game, the wheels are gone. In the case of Raheem, he's got it all right now, and there is absolutely no reason to expect uh, this to stop anytime soon. Give me some thoughts here, Brett, on on Mike McDaniel as a head coach. I mean, a different kind of coach. I guess it's, you know, that new age kind of coach. But even, even saying that, He's still pretty different from those guys like Shanahan and McVay, you know, any of the young guys. He he he's he's on a different level, it seems. Uh, does Rateem talk much about playing under a guy like Mike McDaniel? Well, those guys obviously have had a great relationship dating back to San Francisco, which is a big part of why we ended up here last year. Uh, you know, there were other teams that wanted him. San Francisco made us an offer to come back there. But when McDaniel came down here, uh, it was just too good of an opportunity for us to pass up. Raheem was coming off an injury that year, so we felt like this was the best scenario for him to prove that he's healthy and back to 100%, and he did that. And, uh, you know, in the case of McDaniel, just a very unique coach, very unique person. Um, obviously, mentally, other teams I talked to who were interested in him over the last couple of years have described him as a savant. Um, there's no doubt. I mean, from a football mind, strategic X and O standpoint, this guy's playing chess. And from a personal standpoint, from my conversations with him, certainly one of the most unique coaches I've ever talked to. Uh, there's just a real quality, just a almost like a vulnerability to him, where you know his past is is well known, things he's had to overcome. And people respect that. And I think he's a pretty straight up guy. And I think he brings a real positive energy. And 
So these are things as a player that you respect. And this is a man that you really want to go hard for. How about yesterday's Dolphins win? I mean, granted, I, I, you know, it's, it's the Jets. I get it. I believe it or not, it may sound a little bit silly, Brett. I, I, I think it may have been the best win of the season for the Dolphins. And the reason I say that is because I felt like you were going to find out a little bit about this team coming off of the loss against Tennessee. It could really go one of two ways, the game against the Jets. And yes, the Jets were coming off a good win. Zach Wilson was AFC player of the week. But I, I really felt like we were going to find out a little bit about the Dolphins this game against the Jets. And I mean, they just beat the shit out of them. I thought it was a great win. Yeah, I mean, this offense is poetic. It's 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 a work of art when it's clicking. And this offense, maybe more so than any other in the league, is just so dependent on timing and accuracy. And when things are clicking and when two is in a rhythm and when he's getting time to do his thing, it's almost unstoppable. Uh, but one thing we've seen in a few games this year, there have been times where teams have been able to kind of knock them off their rhythm. And obviously this offensive line has been shuffled um, substantially throughout the year. Uh, and that's just part of the part of the game. That's the way it goes. So as, as coaches, as players, you have to figure out a way to, uh, you know, make it work. And for the most part, the Dolphins have done that. Um, and yeah, the last game against the the Titans, it's kind of a fluke the way that thing worked out. It was sort of a perfect storm at the end there. Definitely uh, a taste you want to get out of your mouth as soon as possible. And uh, the Dolphins did a great job coming out there yesterday and doing just that. And um, if this is the Dolphin team that we're going to see going down the stretch and into the postseason, I'd say the sky continues to be the limit. And it's really not about who is playing their best football on December, you know, whatever that date was of the Titans game or in October. It's really about who's playing their best football coming out of the regular season into the postseason. And so if 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 what happened yesterday is sort of a building block to get them back on track and restore the confidence, uh, again, if, if that's the Dolphin team we're going to see offensively and defensively, uh, I'd put them up against any team in the league. So I'll let you go with this, Brett. You know, re this season, Raheem surpassed the all-time rushing record uh, touchdowns to the Dolphins. Ricky Williams, you know, we're talking, uh, I think it was 20 years ago. Crazy. And and recently surpassed, you know, Mark Clayton's record as well. And it's funny because I, I know you're, you're a Miami guy. You're a Dolphin fan growing up. I certainly am. And it's so weird to think about these guys and the records that they're passing. It's like, does Raheem know who Mark Clayton is? It was so long ago, you know? Raheem knows. Raheem's one of these uh, players of this generation that's very up on their history. He knows all about the Dolphins, greats, about the uh, great running backs in the history of the league. And honestly, Zaz, it's, it's, it's surreal because, like you said, I mean, you know, in 1984 when Mark Clayton set that record, I was there. I was there with my parents, you know, and 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 it's just – it's 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 emotional when I think back to those days, you know, an 11 year old me at those mm -hmm. games. And then here I am at the Monday night game with my 14 year old son and we're watching our client tie those records that night. It's just proof, you know, that dreams come true, you know, the same way that I'm sure, you know, when you were a young sports fan, you dreamed of being able to do what you've done. Uh, this was my dream to do what I do. And never in a million years when I was a kid would I imagine that one day, you know, I would actually be able to do this and that my player would be out there <laughs> breaking a record of one of my heroes like Mark Clayton. So truly, uh, it's 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 just a very humbling, very special moment. It's really cool. Uh, and congrats. I mean, your client, Raheem Mostert, has been fantastic. Everybody down here loves him. I mean, we're we're, we're really lucky to have him in the way that everything's turned out. And look, you know as well. Uh, yesterday goes goes a long way toward it, but these next three games, right, it's going to determine how special this season can potentially be for the Dolphins. Yep. And by the way, Zaz, I'm surprised you didn't make note of the music room here. Oh, yes. Well, of course, you know, if you're watching on YouTube.com slash at Zazlow Show, you can see that Brett's got, I mean, a tremendous guitar collection behind him. I mean, what? so so how do you just, I mean, I'm looking, there's got to be two dozen guitars there. How do you how do you decide which one you're going to pick up and mess around with? The funny thing is there's actually 55 guitars in the collection. You can't see what's going on on these walls, but uh, 
Uh, the funny thing is I probably play like three of them, you know, the rest of them, the rest of them don't get touched, but yeah, I was thinking, should I do this today in my office with all the Jersey frame jerseys in the background, but that would be too cliche. And I know you're a big music guy like I am. So figured we'd change it up a little bit. Who, uh, who, who is your most recent show that you've been to? Oh, most recent show. Um, Pantera. Really? Wow. Saw Pantera up in Milwaukee. I'm good friends with uh, Phil and Salmo, who's their singer. And uh, so it was really great. They set us up with great seats there. And then after the show, we hung out backstage for a few hours, just us and him catching up. So that was really cool. Are they your favorite? No. Um, I like, I'm, I'm a rocker like you. We like a lot of the same stuff. Um, I like everything from classic rock. I like some metal I pretty much like anything. I like classic music. I like I like any music, but uh, but you know, music is actually you know as much as sports is my business, and I love that. Music is really my passion. Yeah, it sounds like we're on the same page, man. So that's uh, yeah, excellent collection back there. If you're listening on the Thank podcast you. right now, you go to the YouTube.com/slash Zaslo Show, and you can see a really impressive uh, collection of guitars in the background there of Brett's uh, music room. Excellent job, Brett. I appreciate you hanging out with us again, and uh, we'll, we'll do it again soon. My pleasure, Zaz. Glad, glad, glad to be here with you. Take care.